My man, Chop Chop Corley, how you feeling today, brother? I'm great, excited to be here at the MGM watching some great fights. Tell me a little bit about boxing in the DMV area. You're like one of the main names out here. Tell me about the new wave of boxing out here. Uh, the new wave is a lot of young, hungry fighters who are um, working much harder than us veteran fighters did coming up in the game. And um, I just take my head off to the young fighters now. So what are you into these days? I know you're still fighting. And you had a fight, two fights with Vivian Harris. Is there beef there? Y'all keep, y'all know like LaMotta, Sugar Ray Robinson? Nah, I want to do that with Zab Judah. Uh, no beef with me and Vivian. It was a great fight the first time. I gave him a rematch. And um, I thought I won the rematch, hands down. But the judges didn't see so. And that was the end of that. No more Matt rematch. Nah. No, no rubber match. River, Vivian can't make the weight that I want to fight at, 140 pounds. Okay. So, so you said you want to do that with Zab Judah. You want to do the LaMotta, Sugar Ray Robinson, five fights? Nah, just three. Just three. It's unfinished business right now. Zab won a split decision. Um, then we're going to do the rematch. I'm going to win. And then let's do the rubber match, see who's going to settle the score. So is there a date set for the rematch already? Uh, no, there's no date yet, but uh, Zab fight June the 7th up in New York. I'll be attending that fight, and then we're going to talk more about setting a date for the first fight, the rematch. So you're a seasoned veteran in the game. Is there any end in the future, or are you just going to... No, I'm going into promoting. I'm going to promoting uh, once me and Zab do our rematch and settle the score. I'm going to start promoting this uh, Chop Chop Corley promotions. And I'm going to promote my son, Lil Chop, and build him. And I got uh, two other sons that's fighting also. Have you had any shows already? No, we haven't relaunched it yet. Okay. The promotion will start probably the first fight with men's ad fight. So you're one of the brothers I learned to respect in the game because you branched off and did other things. Can you tell me a little bit about your designing and how you got into it? I got into fashion in high school. I wanted to be a seamstress and um, I started sewing. And I was already boxing at the time and I wanted to make my own outfit. So I got into sewing and I just started sewing, making prom dresses. And then went from prom dresses to uniform. And I just kept running with it. Can you tell me some of the boxes that you design shoes or clothes for? Uh, a lot of fighters will wear my shoes right now. Jaleel Hatchett, a young amateur getting ready for the Olympics uh, or be turning pro very soon. Uh, the Gary Russell, the Russell brothers, they have my product as well. Um, well a lot of fighters. Uh, uh, Montel Griffin, Hall of Famer. He has my product in Chicago. <laughs> Uh, I got product in uh, Philly right now, Fast Hands Eddie, the, uh, Fast Lane, they got a boxing equipment out. I just did their sweatsuits, he's fighting uh, probably on the Wilder undercard the next time they fight. I'm just building my brand as I go along. What was a fight in your career that you wanted but never happened? Sean Bay Mitchell fight. Sean Bay Mitchell, the battle of DC? Yes. <laughs> the DC fight. <laughs> He was at, well, well what was the fight him at? 140, that was the way we were fighting at. We yeah. both were fighting at 140. Why didn't the fight happen? Uh, he said I wasn't on his level. What? I wasn't on his level, but I knocked the guy out that almost beat him, Felix Flores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was WBA champion at the time, and I was WBO champion. Both of us were promoted by Don King, but he just wouldn't fight me, say I wasn't on his level. Wow. So it was like a DC battle, a South Park battle, <laughs> or just everything. But he said, I'm just like shocked that he said you, he, you weren't on his level. I'm, like what, why? He felt that I wasn't good enough to be in the ring with him at that time. I was a young fighter who took a fight on a five day notice and became world champion. Uh, one, another common opponent that both you guys have is Mayweather. Yes. Who do you think gave Floyd a better fight? I gave Floyd a better fight. I almost knocked him out. But Floyd took it to another level in the second half of the fight. Was that a rematch you ever wanted? I would have loved a rematch if it was at 140. I knew Floyd couldn't go the distance if we stood a fight toe to toe for 12 rounds. That's why he stopped boxing. He just wanted to slick pop shot. But he don't think he could have banged with you for 12 rounds? Not at all. He know he couldn't. His uncle told him, don't bang with me. And he didn't. Because I heard him. Yeah, you heard him a couple of times during that fight. At that time, I know you guys spar a lot, a lot. Every did time you, before the softball. Yeah, did you guys spar before you guys, you and him fought? No. Or you became a sparring partner after you guys fought? After we fought, I became his sparring partner. So how'd that relationship come about? Uh, he wanted the best. 
and he know I gave him the best. So every time he fought a softball, he would reach out to me and make sure I was there for camp. So when you spar with guys like this, and you said you, he was, you were in every camp when he fought a southpaw, did you try to emulate the southpaw he was fighting, or did you just fight typical chop-chop style? I tried to imitate them sometime, but he told me he didn't want me to imitate them. He wanted me to be me and come forward and do what I do best, bring the best out of him. So what do you do best? Because you got a lot of different skills someone can say. What is Chop Chop best? I, I, I mean, I learned from a lot of great fighters. I was sparring Pernell Whitaker right after I turned pro in 96. And I learned how to pay, be patient in the ring and see how other fighters fight each other and sit back and study. And working with Floyd, I seen his demeanor when he come in the gym. He stay up all night long, have a good time party, but when he come to the gym, he come to work. And just because you think he's out partying, he's not partying all the time. He's working three, four o'clock in the morning. He was leaving the strip club, change his clothes in the parking lot, and go run five, seven miles. Wow. So you think he's out at the strip club just turning up? He leave the club and go running seven, eight miles, and then go sleep, and then come to the gym and work. And then he try to let you hang out with him and then get you in the gym and tear your ass up. So he used to set people, his farm partners oh, up like that. He'll let you hang out, enjoy the good life. You better be ready when it comes training time. Did he ever kick anybody out of camp for enjoying themselves too much? I never seen it. Mm -hmm. I never seen it, but I heard he have done it before. So what does Chop Chop do best? Banging, boxing? Cooking. Cooking. Designing. Design. Where's Chop Chop's heart, really? Oh, my. My heart is into boxing. Uh, creating my son, developing his brand, my brand. The reason I ask, because you're a true renaissance man. It's like Jack Johnson. Like, he, he has the patent on a ranch. He conducted uh, orchestras. He did it all. And you remind me of that. Uh, eventually, I will be doing some tap dance. I love music, I love jazz. Um, it's just the music that keeps me motivated and moving. It's a rhythm that you gotta find. And that's what the young fighters gotta find. They gotta find a rhythm. And once they develop the rhythm that they know they can work to, their career will be much longer than what they expected to go. You said music, guys. So can I expect some music from Chop Chop? Uh, I don't play, I don't know. I don't play the music, but I love listening to it. Okay, got James you. Brown, Marvin Gaye, Maze, Frankie Beverly, Smokey Robinson, The Whispers, The OJs. Music, man. The TSOPM. Wait to feel it, baby. What was it like sparring Sweet Pea? Oh, my God. I learned so much from that great fighter, man. He's a legend. And uh, he taught me so much in the game as a softball how to be slick, how to place your punches, how to be patient, and the ups and downs that fighters going to go through so I wouldn't have to go through those stages in my career. Now when you say he taught you how to be slick, is it something you could tell us? Yeah, like it's just, trick? It's, it's the rhythm. When I'm working with Purnell, he would listen to old music, a, a, a singing group called Solo. Solo, of course, yeah. And when he come in the gym, they would put his music on and he would just start imitating like he was dancing, but he was shadow boxing. And then he, when he hit the bag, it was the same thing. His motion was like rhythm dancing and throwing punches at the same time. And I listened to him train and watch him. And he said, Chop, it's patience. Take your time, find your rhythm. When he jumped rope, he listened to music, fast music, up-tempo beat music. And then he slowed the music down with the rope. So it was up and down tempo, and that's what it's about. And when you fight, it's an up and down tempo rhythm when you're in there fighting.